and, and Robert, here's what I would say. You're making a very good argument, and I can totally feel where you're coming from as well. Uh, obviously, just so everybody knows, have we ever had a conversation together prior to this debate? I just want everybody that's watching, no. have you and I ever spoken? We just no. met a few minutes no. ago. Yeah. Have you and I ever spoken? No. Have you and I? No. I did that intentionally. I did that intentionally because I want it to be the first interaction we have where it's not like, well, you know, <laughs> this topic, do you want this, do you want that? And nobody was given additional topics or what. You just kind of came in, we're going to talk, we're going to have this discussion. Again, I respect you guys for doing this. I think the part I agree with Daniel, and it could be a, it could be a leak, it could be a flaw, or it could be a, a strength as well as the following. The, the, what I'm noticing between the two faiths is one seems to be more intolerant more intolerant, and the other one's more tolerant. Let me unpack that from my perspective. For the longest time since I uh, became a, uh, since I started praying September of 1997, I've prayed for four things, courage, wisdom, tolerance, understanding. The last six months, I've been having a hard time praying for the third thing, which is tolerance. Uh, and the reason for it is because I think Christians are becoming way too tolerant. Now, the standards could be extreme. Somebody could be watching and saying, guys, what are you talking about? You mean to tell me you're okay to hit your wife and do this and do that and apostasy and all this stuff? That's ridiculous for you to think that. And then you may say, well, look, we're at least staying committed to our faith. They're not. They're picking and choosing what they like and they're not. That could be the argument. All I'm saying is that's their argument, what they're yeah. saying. Yeah. But then the other side is when you're saying what you're saying, you know, stats came out right now as well about uh, Pew Research on statistics on Muslims' view on LGBTQ. You're now going to go through this as well with your faith, with your religion. Pew Research says that 52% of American Muslims believe homosexuality should be accepted by society. This is according to Pew Research. Among Muslim American millennials, that jumped to 60%. This was done in 2017, so it's six years old, which I would assume it's even higher today than what it was then. The survey also revealed that Muslim women are much more accepting of LGB people than their male counterparts. They're at 63%, men are at 42%. Just so you know the difference between women and men, about 21% difference. And a vast majority of religious LGBTQ Americans are Christians, split uh, uh, fairly amongst Catholics, 25%, Protestants, 28%, and Christian denomination, 24.5%. Only about 2.5% uh, uh, of Jews uh, uh, are for it, and 2% are Muslims, okay? So he makes the point that you know, you are more tolerant of a religion of, when I say you, you're not representing everybody in a Christian. You could be your own kind of a Christian. Yeah. There's different, you know, sects in a Christian. But I, from an outsider watching in and trying to be as fair as possible, I see we're not being tolerant. You're not going to say anything about our prophet. You're not going to say anything about our religion. We're going to defend this. These are our values. We're going to protect it. We're going to fight for it. This is important to us. This is our livelihood. This is what we stand for. And Christians are like, ah, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Ah, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Ah, it's okay. Don't worry about it. And then it's bringing out more flaws and arguments in the Christian religion. And I'm saying this as a Christian myself. What, what, what's your rebuttal to that? Well, what you're talking about in a large part is a retreat from and a rejection of Christianity, not actual Christianity. Christianity stands for certain values, stands for certain principles, and when the West was Christian, then you didn't see all this craziness that you see in the society today. It's when the West starts to discard Christianity that all these things come in. Like Chesterton said, when people stop believing in God, it's not that they believe in nothing, they believe in anything. And we're seeing that illustrated every day now with increasingly insane public discourse coming from the left, and especially a social discourse. But this is not Christianity. Now, to be sure, you're absolutely right. There are a lot of leftist and liberal Christians who have essentially discarded Christianity. Yeah. And under the guise of Christianity, it's kind of like invasion of the body snatchers Christianity. You remember that movie? Mm -mm. People would appear and they looked just the same, but the space aliens had taken their personalities and replaced them. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have with a great deal of Christianity today. Unfortunately, it's been infected by exactly this kind of liberalism. And so a lot of people turn away thinking that's Christianity when actually these people are not Christian in anything except the name.
But there's a great deal more that Daniel will mention. Am I going to get a chance? You to can. You can respond right now. Okay. Yeah. The uh, thing, the problem that you guys have is that you're reading the Bible as if it were the Quran. In the Quran, it's dictated. Every Allah dictated every word, and it's applicable for all time. It's all flattened out and on the same level. The Bible is simply not like that. In the first place, you have the very simple notation of the Gospels, the Gospel according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, in the Christian faith, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were inspired, but that doesn't mean that God was dictating to them and that it was beyond their human understanding. Like when St. Paul, in one of his letters, and he says, I'm glad I didn't come to baptize any of you. Well, actually, I did baptize a couple people, and I forget who else, but I still didn't come to baptize. It's not that God is forgetting who he baptized and who he didn't, but Paul is working from his human understanding, and yet he is speaking the truths, the eternal truths that God wants him to communicate. A lot of the Bible is the record of the evolving understanding of the people of God about precisely a lot of these issues that you're talking about. And so you can't go back and flatten it out as if it were the Quran and say, Jesus is here telling people to kill people, and therefore you have to approve of it. Well, Jesus That's is God. just not how the Bible works. What you have is an understanding that the people had at that time that's expressed in that way, and then later, because of the teachings that Jesus gives in the New Testament primarily, of the dignity of the universal dignity of the human person and of the various other aspects of the understanding of humanity. That's why slavery is abolished, and slavery was only abolished in Christian contexts, primarily in, in the UK and the United States to start with, and then it followed around the world, because people understood, even though slavery is in the Bible and in the New Testament, yes, at the same time, also, there's the idea that all people are made in the image of God and have that dignity. So there's not the dichotomy like in the Quran, Muhammad is the apostle of Allah, those who follow him are merciful to one another, ruthless to the unbelievers, at chapter 48, verse 29. So in the, it was Christian clerics in the UK and the United States who led the fight to abolish slavery based on the deeper Christian principles regarding the dignity of the human person. Yes. 